Hi, my name is John. And my name is Alice. And these videos are if you're a parent trying to help your child with math. Today, we're covering multiplying fractions with partial products. So first, I'm going to show you how I learned it when I was in elementary school. I would turn this into an improper fraction. So I would say 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. And the denominator would stay 5. Then I'd say 4 times 3 is 12, plus 3 is 15. So I'd get 15 over 4. Now I would multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. So that would be 12 times 15 on the top. And I'm going to do that out longhand. And then 5 times 4 is 20. So I'm going to do out 12 times 15 over here. Five times two is 10. Five times one is five plus one is six. One times two is two. One times one is one. So I'm gonna get 180 over 20. And now I'm gonna reduce. So I can divide top and bottom by 10. That'll give me 18 over two, 18 is even, so two goes into 18 clean, so that reduces to just nine. John, what's the partial product method approach? So in grades K to five, we usually use partial products for multiplying integers, but the idea can also be extended to fractions. We can take numbers like two and two fifths, three and three fourths, and decompose them into their um, integer whole number portion and then their fractional portions two and two fifths, and then the same for three and three fourths. And to help us find the product of these two uh, mixed numbers, we can break it up into four smaller problems, hence the phrase partial product. We can find four smaller products and then add them all up in the end. And to help us, we will use a rectangle that not only reinforces the, the area concept of behind multiplication, but also helps organize students' work and serves as a foreshadowing of future math problems to come. So we can first begin by doing the easiest product, three times two, that makes six. Next, for three times two fifths, students understand it as three two fifths. Um, two fifths, they understand is two one fifths. So if I multiply three by two fifths, they think of that as three sets of two fifths, which is two fifths plus two fifths plus two fifths, or six fifths. Next, for two times three fourths, student, students understand that as two sets of three quarters. So that would be three fourths plus three fourths or six fourths. And then last, three fourths times two fifths. Um, that is just straight across multiplication with, with simple numbers. Three times two makes six and four times five makes 20. And we got a nice proper fraction. To find the total product, we then look at each of these individual, you know, partial products, and we're going to look to add them all up. But we notice that in our set, we have one integer, six, and we have two improper fractions, six fifths and six fourths. So we can break those up into uh, five fifths and one fifth in order to get another whole to add to six. And then same thing here, we can break this up into four fourths and two fourths in order to get, again, another hole that we can lump in with six. So at this point in the game, we have a whole number of six, we have a whole one here and a whole one here. So these three circle values add up to eight. I have six, a one, and a one. Last, we'll deal with our fractional units, one-fifth, two-fourths, and six-twentieths. Each of those is a proper fraction, and we can add up proper fractions by using common denominators. The common denominator of 5, 4, and 20 is 20, and that simply means we can turn all of the denominators into the same value by means of multiplication. Um, 20 is the least common multiple of all three of those values. So I can do that with the one-fifth, I can multiply the top and the bottom each by four. 
and that gives me four fifths. For the two fourths, I can multiply the top and the bottom each by five. That gives me, um, oh, that's sorry, that should be four twentieths, not four fifths. Uh, four twentieths. I can do it for the two fourths, uh, top and bottom each by five. That's ten twentieths. And then good news, the six twentieths already had a denominator of 20, so no work required there. And then now I just add my three fractions up, 4 twentieths, 10 twentieths, and 6 twentieths. That makes 20 twentieths, just like 2020. We're in 2020 right now. Um, and 20 twentieths is another way of saying one. We have 20 twentieths. That's another whole. So if I add that, you know, the result of my fractional parts together, I get another whole out. So I get 8 plus 1, which is 9. Now, you might be wondering, oh, my God, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of multiplication and adding. But it really gives students an intuitive understanding of whole numbers and fractional parts and the things that go into finding a product. And I think it also avoids a lot of common mistakes that happen down the line. As Alice was explaining her work, I realized that when I learned how to do this in grade school, we were taught cross-canceling. We were taught four goes into 12 three times, and then five goes into 15 three times. Three times three is nine. As a former high school teacher, I could tell you that process is horrendous by the time the students reach um, upper middle school and ninth grade, because when they solve equations with, with variables, they cross-cancel instead of cross-multiply and confuse the two processes. So I, I try to avoid using standard algorithm and cross-canceling in favor of more conceptual processes like these where students can break the task down into smaller tasks and really understand the whole number and fractional part concept. Okay, perfect. Go ahead. Okay, so now I'm gonna try a problem. Two and a third times four and a half. So let me do my rectangles and this is gonna be two and a third and four and a half. So first I'm gonna do four times two, which is gonna give me eight four times a third, so that's four one-thirds. So that's gonna give me four thirds, which is improper. Two times a half, so that's two one-halves. So that's two halves. One-half times one-third, which is gonna give me one-sixth. I did two times three to get the denominator. And so now I'm going to do what John did and try to take out my integers. So I've got an eight, which is wonderful. <laughs> I've got four thirds, which again is improper. The numerator is larger than the denominator. So there's a whole number lurking in there. I can think of that as three thirds and a third. So that's this guy. I've got two halves which is one, so that's nice. And then I've got a six. So I'm gonna take my integers, eight, three thirds, which is one, this one here. So it's gonna give me 10. And now I have to handle my leftovers. So I still got a third here and a sixth here. Now that's not too bad because a common denominator there is gonna be six. So I need to multiply the top and bottom by two here. So that'll give me two six plus one sixth. So if I have two sixth and one sixth, I'm gonna have three of those sixths is. <laughs> So that's going to give me 10 and 3 sixths, and I can reduce that further. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 6 twice. So I end up getting 10 and 1 half. 
So the nice thing about knowing this approach is now you can, if this is how your, your child is learning it, now you know how to help them. If you prefer the way you learned it, um, you can still use that method to check your work, but now you know, um, you know why they're drawing these rectangles, why they're breaking it up in this, in this way, and you can help them uh, learn in that method, which is going to help them uh, in their future math classes. Thank you so much for stopping by our video. Hope to see you soon.